What if Rosh Hashanah is the day that I come? September 15, 1998, Elizabeth Elijah Nicomiah. I went to bed and woke up weeping on September 16, 1998, for I had been praying in my sleep, which isn't unusual. For many times this has happened, and it's like all night, even while I sleep, I am praying. But what was unusual is I awoke and was weeping, sobbing, and intervening for the bride of Yahushua Messiah. I heard a voice speak these words that awoke me. What if Rosh Hashanah is the day that I come? I heard it for two days on September 15th and September 16th, 1998. Though some will think I am insane for speaking this, I know I am held accountable if I don't. Ezekiel 3.17.21 says, When a watchman is given a warning, and he or she doesn't pass it on, then the blood will be on their hands. But when they do give a warning, and even if they don't listen, the blood will be on our hands. So I am warning, like Yahushua warned me in the same words, What if Rosh Hashanah is the day that I come? As I said, I awoke to this voice. It was almost audible, but I know it wasn't audible, but loud enough to have been audible. And it was Yahushua speaking. I know that voice, the same one that told me of West Virginia and wrath, the same one that told me of six eclipses, then he comes. I was weeping and interceding, not only for myself, but all those who were on my prayer list, saying, O oh, Yahushua, please count us worthy to be received as your bride, spotless and white. O oh, Yahushua, please have mercy and forgive us, for none of us are perfect. I said there was no way I could name all the names that I was trying to lift up to Yahushua, so I said, Here is my invisible list. Please spare your bride. Please come and take us home with you and spare us of this wrath that is to come. Count us worthy to be called your bride of Yahushua Messiah. I prayed until I was exhausted and fell asleep weeping for the bride. I prayed that Yahushua would count the bride worthy to be taken home to be with him when he comes. Even in my sleep I was praying and weeping, and as I awoke this went on. Each time I heard plainly the same voice say exactly the same thing. What if Rosh Hashanah is the day that I come? The only other time Yahushua spoke anything different, no matter what I said, was one time he said to me, and this is personal, but since I am speaking the truth, I must say it completely. Yahushua, I believed, had promised me that Nicomiah, that I had been searching and waiting for, my Yahweh-ordained partner in this ministry and life, would come before the rapture. But now Yahushua was saying to me, What about Nicomiah? Do you still want me to come when Nicomiah has not yet come? I said, Oh, yes, Yahushua, oh, yes, it doesn't matter, for you are my Yahushua and my Savior, my Messiah, my groom. And then I started praying and interceding again for the bride of Yahushua Messiah to be counted worthy to be raptured, caught away in the clouds with Yahushua when he comes. Then Yahushua said, Tell the people, tell them these exact words I am saying, for they know not when, but tell them to be ready, no matter when it is. Call yourself not pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib, for it is none of these things. Tell them to be expecting me on Rosh Hashanah, as if that were the day, to keep the days of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur holy before me, for Yahweh would not lie to the Jewish people. They know they are to expect their Savior on Rosh Hashanah, and know not which one. Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob does not lie. Tell them their Savior they rejected is the Savior that comes again. They will hate you, yet you must love them and me. On Rosh Hashanah, make sure you and the bride await me, as if expecting to hear the words, Come hither at any time. Tell them my bride is sleeping. Shake her awake. I hear these messages and see this vision of me seeing a beautiful sleeping bride on a bed. And Yahushua showed me, taking her by the shoulders and shaking her in his power to awake her before it's too late. For the bridegroom does come and he comes quickly. I am not saying it will be on September 20th or September 21st, 1998. I am saying Yahushua Messiah is saying, what if Rosh Hashanah is the day that I come? Now all I know is what I have told you, no more and no less, except I was in deep intercession, for the bride is not ready at this time for the most part. Please wake up, bride of Yahushua Messiah. What if Rosh Hashanah is the day that I come? Be ready whenever it is. Come, Yahushua, come quickly is our prayer. Amen.
Yahushua awoke me and said it for two days, 9.15 and 9.16, 1998, and had had me interceding for the bride of Yahushua Messiah, that for the most part is not ready for him to gather his bride home. He told me to shake awake under his anointing the sleeping bride. He spoke the words that almost sounded audibly, if, you, if only you could hear them, for I can still hear them, even the tone of his voice. I pray that I will always remember this. What if Rosh Hashanah is the day that I come? Yahushua is not saying he is coming for sure on one of these two holy days. I don't know. But he is saying be ready and think like he is coming at any moment, no matter when the time comes. So we have this blessed promise. And Almighty Yahweh is not like a man who lies. We also shall be raised from the dead and have glorified bodies. And we which are alive when Yahushua comes again will not have to die to obtain these glorified bodies. This is our promise. We don't have hell to fear. We have heaven to look forward to because the price Yahushua paid at Calvary. We don't accept sickness. We accept healing because of Yahushua. We don't accept death. We accept resurrection. We have bodies made of flesh now so weak and frail and easily tempted. Yet we by faith know this is just a shell like a turtle has. Our true bodies are of our spirit bodies. Although the world cannot see the glorified bodies they await us, the flesh cannot see our souls, but that's the reality. And when our souls leave these bodies of flesh and blood, when they are released, they, they either go to heaven or hell. No purgatory, no waiting rooms, everyone right now is making the reservations for either heaven or hell. Once you take your last breath, it is too late. Don't let your reservation for heaven be canceled. No one or anything is worth that. Live each day on earth as if it's your last. For rapture or not, it could be your last on earth. No one is guaranteed another second. Make the most of what time that you have left. Make it count for Yahushua, Yahweh, and the Ruach HaKadosh. Sitting in churches where you just take in and don't give out of the abundance that you are learning makes you nothing but a pew warmer. How many souls have you touched for Yahushua and not for a religion? Religion is man-made. A loving relationship with Yahushua is Almighty Yahweh made. Oh, what an awesome Almighty Yahushua Master Savior and our soon-coming groom. We do worship, serve, and love, putting Yahushua above everything and everyone in life. Stay close to Him, especially as these holy days approach. Yahweh and Yahushua and the Ruach HaKadosh are very angry, especially with the last decision of Tur torturing the babies in the inhuman act of what is so loosely called partial birth abortion, and yet is murder and torture to the highest degree, premeditated murder. The innocent blood of those babies is on the hands of the three that withheld their votes, and I only pray that they will have to suffer untold agony for what they have done to those babies and are allowing to continue. They have all the time while in hell to have a spike driven in the base of their necks, and then have the fluid sucked out of them while alive, and then be decapitated. Only difference is these babies go back to heaven once this agony is over. Oh, the cruelty. For the sake of what? But these three who have done these things, they are reprobate, and for all eternity they will suffer in hell for what they have done. No, I am not praying for their souls. They are reprobate. Read Jeremiah 6, verses 27 to 30. If you don't know what reprobate is, someone's name written and then blotted out of the book of life. On 9-18-98, when the decision was made, only three votes short. But the suffering for these three in hell will only go on for eternity. Why didn't every American and every Christian in the world oppose this cruel, violent act? Oh, Yahushua, this is my way of standing up and saying, Yahushua, forgive your bride. Oh, I am so sorry for many of us, including me, didn't find this out until too late, hanging my head. And yet, this is a poor excuse. Oh, but remember, America, you will pay for what you have done, desecrating Almighty Yahweh and Yahushua's holy day. A few days before Almighty Yahweh's holy days, the lawmakers passed this act of inhumane murder of the innocent babies. Not even death row knows such gruesome deaths, for we try to be merciful to the guilty ones that murder. Get it over quickly and painlessly is the main motive of execution. And yet for the innocent babies, with no one to hear their screams and feel the fear... But Almighty Yahweh, Yahushua, and the Ruach HaKadosh for them whose only crime was being born. For you three evil lawmakers, I pray not a moment from this time on will you rest in peace. In your dreams you will see and hear the cries of the innocent babies. The blood will be as great as a great anchor around your necks and backs. 
These three lawmakers who break Yahweh and Yahushua's laws, murdering the innocent, no more blessings will you see. What you hold dear will be taken from all you lawmakers who grieve heaven and have hell rejoicing at your votes. In Yahushua Messiah's name, I ask that you lawmakers realize your law is not lawful in the eyes of Almighty Yahweh. I pray the fear of Yahweh upon you. Never a moment of peace or joy. Even your own laughter will be an echo and hollow to your ears. For you three lawmakers who did the will of the Antichrist, Satan, and the false prophet have truly lost your souls for this act of treachery against heaven and earth. The blood of the unborn who are murdered and tortured daily, and all those who say abortion is lawful, the same punishment is yours. Thus saith Yahweh. What started out as my prayer ended up with the word I heard in the spirit. These are not my curses, for my curses have no power, only anger. But when Yahweh and Yahushua under the anointing say, Tell them, thus saith Yahweh, those have power. Oh, what a fearful thing the Bible says. It is to fall into the hands of the living Almighty Yahweh and Yahushua. These are their babies you are torturing and murdering. You lawmakers vote for murder and torture for these innocent babies. The laws of America say torture and murder is what unwanted babies deserve. And this is only one form of torture. What about the giant vacuum that tears apart their little bodies one part at a time? What about the saline solution that burns the babies alive? Oh, the torture. Oh, the blood on the taxpayers' hands who paid these politicians who elected them to office. Oh, Yahushua. Oh, Yahushua. The blood is on America's hands. Please spare your people. Those of us now who grieve for America and what it is doing, Please, Father Yahweh and Yahushua, before your wrath is poured out upon this world, please, for your mercy's sake, remember, it's Yahushua's blood that covers us who belong to you. Spare us for your mercy's sake. Please, Yahushua, take your bride home now. Let us be counted worthy. Take us, your bride, home in what we call the rapture. You spared Lot, and he had a place to go before Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed from heaven. Show us, your children, where to go. Show us now what to do. I beg you, our Yahushua, for mercy, for your bride, which I am a part of only because of the same merciful blood at Calvary that you spilled for me and all those who, who receive you as Master and Savior, and know that you're the Son of the Almighty Yahweh. You gave no an ark. Where can we go? Where in this world is there an ark for your children? Please, Yahushua, hear your children's and servants' cries. Save us, O Yahushua and Yahweh. Father Yahweh and Yahushua are very angry this day. September 19th, 1998, I can feel part of their grief and rage. Pray for mercy on us who live in America especially. Holy Dream on Rosh Hashanah 2003. I was being lifted up in the air, laughing and full of joy. I could see others were being lifted up in the sky also. I was shouting in joy to them. See? I told you Yahushua was coming back on a Rosh Hashanah. I just didn't know which one. <laughs> I asked Yahushua why I didn't know from that dream when he said I was the ring maiden and that would be like the one in, like in Matthew 25, the voice that cries out to the five wise virgins, Behold, prepare yourself, the bridegroom doth come. Yahushua said it is because he wanted to encourage me, and at the time of the dream, just like now, I don't know which Rosh Hashanah because it's not the time yet to know. Elizabeth, Elijah, Nicomiah. Reading from First Corinthians chapter 15 Behold, I tell you a mystery We shall not all sleep But we shall all be changed In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye At the last trumpet For the trumpet will sound And the dead will be raised incorruptible And we shall be changed For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this incorruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the same that is written death is swallowed up in victory oh death where is your
your sting? Oh, haters, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Yahashua HaMashiach. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord Yahashua HaMashiach. Amen.